Welcome, this is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. This is the Health Ranger Report at naturalnews.com. And as you can see, I'm wearing a shirt today, Water is Life. This is a, a truism about human biology, isn't it? In fact, life on the whole planet. And here today uh, is a special guest, or joining us by phone actually, who has a special interest in keeping our water safe and clean. She's running for city council in Austin, Texas, where I'm located. Her name is Laura Presley, and she's been one of the most outspoken opponents against the chemical fluoridation of the water supply. She's hosting a money bomb right now to raise campaign funds to help her win the election and get a seat on the city council in Austin, where she can then help lead the fight against water fluoridation and contamination of the Austin water supply with synthetic dangerous chemicals. Laura, thanks for joining me today. Hey, Mike, thank you for having us. I love being on your show. We've been on a, a couple times, and thank you for, for having us again. It's great to have you on. Uh, I hear you're making a lot of waves in Austin right now with your run for city council. People are, I heard, they're accusing you of being a Ron Paul supporter. That sounds like a compliment to me. What's the I deal? know. It is, it is hilarious. The, um, my opponent, who I'm running against, I'm running uh, for Austin City Council, place two. And our opponent, he cannot stand on his own policies or his own voting record or his own experience. And so the only thing he can do to attack us is say that, you know what, in, in, in Austin, it's, it's mostly a Democrat-type um, community. And I'll tell you what, the, the left-right paradigm is alive and well here in Austin. <laughs> and totally. And uh, if you're not a Democrat, you know, people don't think you can be elected to a city council place. Well, we're, we're you know, I'm basically an independent and um, all he can say is that she's got a Ron Paul sticker on the back of her car, and we can't have one of those in the city council. And that is a direct quote from him. Well, that's extraordinary because, first of all, uh, the progressive, let's say, Democrat liberal community, uh, they believe in the legalization of medical marijuana or the decriminalization. Yes. yes. They believe in clean water. Uh, they believe in ending wars. They're, yes, they're strong environmentalists. They're anti-war. And they don't like giving, you know, their money, uh, taxpayer money, to a bunch of rich people. Yeah, but and, and so, but my point is that Ron Paul supports all of these positions that the, exactly. the liberals support. So why are they, why are exactly. they against Ron Paul? I don't, I don't get that. Well, of course we know that the, you know, the mainstream media demonizes Ron Paul for his policies and. and puts out a lot of disinformation and misinformation because he's, in the, he's a threat to the establishment. Sure. So the good parts of him that are consistent with the Democratic Party, which are the no wars, no bailouts, no NDAA, right. um, they don't really look at that. They just look at the part, oh, he's anti-woman, okay, he's anti-abortion, he's anti-environment, you know, environment, anti-regulation. So they, they skew all of these components of his, his candidacy. And I've had to answer for a lot of this <laughs> during, during our our run for city council and explaining his positions, and it falls on deaf ears because they've been told so much by the mainstream media. But well, my opponent, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, I didn't, I didn't mean to make this conversation about Ron Paul. I want to make this a conversation about you, Laura Presley. Now, clearly you are pro-woman because oh. you are a woman, and you want clean drinking water for all the women and mothers out there, too. That's right. We want to protect our babies and our children and our women who are so sensitive to hypothyroidism. And fluoridation, you know, affects women disproportionately, and it affects minorities disproportionately, Hispanics and African Americans with fluorosis, you know, at two to three x higher than than it does Anglo's. So yes, all of our all of the things that we're standing for in the city council are consistent with Democratic um, Party uh, values, and and of course he cannot focus on that because his his voting record for subsidies and against the environment and against our families with fluoridation. He can't stand on that. Right. So he has to pick something that's inflammatory, and it seems to be working to some extent. The other part is, like you said, he is doing a lot of advertising for me here in Austin because there are a lot of Ron Paul supporters here in Austin. Well, but l let me explain to our viewers why this is really a national issue. It's, it's, Austin has become the battleground for the fluoride debate. Uh, yeah. Dr. Paul Conant, for example, came here and testified, I believe, was that be in front of the city council? Or, or? Yes, many times. He's yeah. done multiple times. And you've been on the issue. Uh, InfoWars team has Alex Jones and the whole crew there. They've been investigating. They, in fact, they ran a video that exposed the, uh, the, the chemicals that are fluoride that's being dumped into the awesome water supply. Yes. And so if we can get fluoride chemicals, the poison, 
removed from the water supply in Austin, that really helps set a national precedent. And that's why electing you, getting you into a, a city council seat is crucial for having that domino effect across the country. How can people support your campaign, Laura? Well, we are, thank you, Mike, and we are having a money bomb this week to raise funds for our campaign. And we don't have the, what they call bundlers here in Austin, where these people go out and, and give money for the candidates and, and, and bundle money as it comes in. And, and typically those bundlers are real estate um, developers or, you know, industry that's getting these subsidies from, from our city council currently. So we are doing grassroots. We, we need everybody's support as much as possible. There's a $350 limit per individual and $700 limit um, contribution limit for couples. So we have at PresleyForAustin.com, we have a contribute page, and we're doing the money bomb this week, and we need support. We really do. There's a big push. We have about a month before the election, and we've got a whole strategy of getting our message out and getting – how we're different from this candidate and how we will not be giving a bunch of our tax dollars <laughs> to these rich corporations like Apple. Austin City Council just gave Apple Corporation the $110 billion cash-rich company, the richest company in the world outside of these banking and financial institutions. We just gave them $8.6 million to come in and bring 3,600 jobs over the next 10 years, and it's an outrage. They, Apple was going to come here anyway. And there's, um, there's a lot of ways we can generate 300 jobs per year over the next 10 years by investing in small businesses and keeping that money in Austin and keeping that money right. locally. So, that's, well, so we need people's help with donations if they can do that. I want to ask you about Apple in a separate segment with you here. But okay. first, to wrap this up, I want to also inform people of a little bit about your background and ask you to comment on that too. You have a PhD in chemistry. Uh, you've, you're from the high-tech industry. You're also in the natural products industry. You have a rainwater company that, that sells bottled rainwater. What else do people need to know about you and, and sort of your background? Well, I'm, um, I've, I'm, I'm also a survivor of domestic violence. You know, one of the things that, that I can provide on the city council is a perspective of how really, you know, our, our city funds can support and help people out of poverty. I have been in a shelter myself with my daughter when she was two years old. She's now 27. But I have seen the benefit of investing in our community, investing in people. And so not only do I have the tech side background, I was in the semiconductor industry here in Austin for 17 years. And um, I was an engineer and I was a, a business manager. I managed a $1 billion uh, business at networking business and I was a cost reduction manager. So I really have a lot of the expertise to get in the city council and start cutting waste, cutting expenses, but also having the side of seeing how if we could, if we could really fund critical and effective programs to get people out of poverty. But that's, see, I'm, I'm an example of that. You talk about cutting waste. This is part of the reason why they don't want you there because a lot of that so-called waste is actually graft and corrupt money going into somebody's pocket and from what i hear about the city council it's very very corrupt and they want to keep it that way so you're you would shake that up it sounds like absolutely and and we're and that's why they're pressing so hard on this ron paul issue trying to you know demonize us and we're just trying to get in there and and, and do what's right for the citizens but there is a ton of waste mike i, I met with one of the, the well the ceo of austin energy it's a one billion dollar entity here in, in our in our um, community, and, and they provide our electricity. But then there's some profit they make, and that goes into funding these these major programs. And I asked him, and I said, why are we not doing cost reduction and efficiency and waste reduction programs before you start raising rates to citizens? And he told me the CEO said of Austin Energy, he said we don't have the bandwidth to go cut costs. I'm like, well, you have the bandwidth to go raise rates for all of us. Why can't you look in your own backyard? And so I pretty much, you know, told him what for and and exposed that there's nothing they're doing that the city council setting the expectation for for them to to be less wasteful. And you're right, it's going into the pocket of somebody, and that somebody's not going to be happy. But we are there to shake it up, use our voice, expose what's going on, and um, make a difference. Well, and and the. The people of Austin are, are never going to benefit from this corruption. It's in, I always find it interesting that these people who worship big government, they never benefit from it. The government keeps them in poverty. And, and the, 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 somehow they think the government is their savior when they're getting screwed. <laughs> it's, 
Well, I think like, I think on. what hap- I agree with you. I think what happens is the middle class and then the upper classes, the upper middle class, you know, in, in all communities, they have disposable income. So you're really not affecting their pocketbook yet when they're raising electric rates, raising water rates. And what happens is those lower income classes and those people in already in poverty absolutely are destroyed financially when these things happen. And what happens is they develop these people out and they go in and buy their property and they put mixed use, large commercial developments on that cheap land. And I'll tell you what, that's what's going on in Austin. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that's a lot about cycle. some under the table property deals and the, and the city seizing property from people using eminent domain and then later selling it a few years later to their friends and, and connected insiders, things like that. Yes, and then giving these subsidies, you know, I, the council member that I'm going up against, he actually made the statement two nights ago in a candidate forum that the city needs to balance the risk for these companies coming in and spending millions of dollars of an investment in the city needs to, to help them with that risk and, and mitigate that risk. And I was in shock. That sounds just that like is, the banker bailout justification. It is no different. It's exactly that. And I say, you know what? I will not give our tax dollars to a bunch of rich corporations. Yeah. And and that's that's what I stand for. And, and the, the people in Austin are very frustrated with this. And I know they're frustrated with it across the country because this is a model that's being translated across all cities, Dallas, Arlington, um, Houston, all across the country. This is a model that's happening now where councils are being approached. We'll come and bring these jobs if you give us this money. And they feel kind of there's a fear factor. And that's one thing that I do not operate off of. <laughs> I, I don't have the fear chip in my head. I, I missed it somehow when I was born, and I just don't have it. So I don't operate off of that. So they, they can't make those arguments with me. And I'll just give them back the, you know, the business cases of why we don't need as citizens to be sub, sub, subsidizing them. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to talk to you about that in another segment. But for wrapping this one up, the website, folks, is PresleyForAustin.com. That's where you can help contribute to her money bomb, her fundraising effort to actually get a seat on the Austin City Council. And when that happens, that, that'll be a real game changer for the fluoride debate across the country. It will be. And Laura, I hope that uh, once, once you're there in that seat, you'll still find time to talk with us. Oh, <laughs> I would love to keep doing that. That's wonderful. And again, what I can provide on the council, because I have a chemistry background, is I can provide education. And that's kind of the first step in this whole fluoridation thing. They're, they're, the council is being educated by the, the city staff that doesn't have the most recent data and really doesn't have the expertise to analyze and present that data in a, in a way that is, is cohesive and, and understandable. And that's the piece I can bring. Sure. Yeah, well, they should be in favor of education, but it's funny how it's very selective <laughs> where issues like fluoride, they, they don't want to know. Don't tell us, you know, or, or economics, basically, it sounds like, yes. with, with the company subsidies. Anyway, we'll talk about that in another segment. Thanks for watching, folks, and thank you, Laura, for joining me today here on the Health Ranger Report. Thanks for watching. This interview was brought to you by SupplySource.com. Yes, that's our online retailer partnered up with Daniel Vitalis on that where you can find survival and preparedness gear that really works. It's rugged stuff that we test. I tested on the ranch in Texas. Daniel tested in the wilderness in Maine. And the things that pass our tests end up on the website. Things that break, don't. Because <laughs> we don't sell crap that breaks. Anyway, that helps support these interviews, which is a very, it's a, it's a costly operation to keep this going. So if you'd like to help support our video interviews with all these great guests and all these great companies, please check out supplysource.com and thank you for your support. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. Take care.